Before we begin, click subscribe to stay up to date with all of our newest video content. Alrighty, let's take a look at one of the most utilized sets of APIs in the world. In June of 2006, Google launched the Google Maps API allowing JavaScript developers to put Google Maps on their own websites. Few other companies had or have the resources to tackle mapping the world, let alone making that available via an API. Google did. While not the first to use APIs on the web, Salesforce can take credit for that in 2000, Google has since exposed thousands of APIs for free and at low cost to companies the world over. Google's own Maps application utilizes their own API. Similarly, the Acumatica app uses the Acumatica mobile app. When a desktop user logs into Acumatica and looks at a vendor or customer record, they have the option to validate the address or to display this address on a map. This is done via con a configurable set of code that can point to Google or Bing Map APIs or even use Avalara's Tax API to check address and postal codes. Without these APIs, this functionality would not exist and we'd spend our time manually validating postal codes via web searches, paying for high dollar reports, or digging through phone books. Let's talk about three common ways to design integration to Acumatica. In these examples, I'm using the popular marketing site Constant Contact. Constant Contact provides a variety of APIs for managing contact information and using that information to build mass marketing email campaigns and constructing in-house and customer surveys. The first example shows adding the application code to Acumatica's native language. Acumatica is well suited to do this via its customization suite. This could take the form of an additional button added to a form like our validate address example earlier, be completely hidden from the end user running in the background, or even be a fully standalone new form added to Acumatica just to handle this process. This new Acumatica code could then push or pull data from Constant Contact's API. The middle example shows creating a standalone application to handle the translation of data and the push or pulls between the two systems' APIs. Depending on the intended process, the application contacts the Acumatica Marketing app API to retrieve or send data. It then uses a send or retrieve data operation to complete the process with Constant Contact's email campaign API, or vice versa as the situation requires. The important thing to note here is that the middleware could live on a single employee's PC, multiple employee's PC, a network server with internet access, or even on a cloud server with access to the internet. The third example shows the application code living inside the Constant Contact program. The Constant Contact API is never used in this example. Only the Acumatica marketing API is pushed to or pulled from. Many companies have code that is ready to connect to Acumatica's APIs with minor configurations. When designing integrations, we need to keep in mind that this may also be in existence. In this example, Constant Contact's dev team would have recognized the need for an integration point to Acumatica and created it using Acumatica's APIs. Another possibility is that the non-Acumatica program may have customization tools available like Acumatica's. Zoho CRM is one such case I have run into recently. The design choice here then becomes a matter of which has the most robust tools and which presents the better ROI to develop in. When talking about processing signals from APIs, we also often use the terms push, pull, polling, and webhooks. Polling or polling, this is an application connecting to an API, seeing if the expected conditions are met, and then acting. This was the first method developed, but is rarely the best method to utilize. Pushing, also called webhooks, this is when an application registers a URL with an API. The API then pushes data, a notification, to that URL when the expected conditions are met i.e. the event. The application recognizes the change in the URL and then acts. This is the preferred method, especially in long-running operations or when operations are performed asynchronously. That's to say, not performed in a specific order. WebSockets are just starting to gain usage in the API world. Here, the applications maintain a handshake connection. Only when a requested event occurs will a notification be sent along the connection. The advantage of webhooks apply here, as does the ability to register and unregister requested events along the open connections. While possible with webhooks, this is more elegantly handled by web sockets. There are three or four integration options, depending on how you want to break it down. This doesn't include the fifth API for the mobile application, which is out of scope of these videos. 
The first of these options is OData. Initiated by Microsoft in 2007, OData, or Open Data Interface, is a standard protocol for sending XML data across the web via XML. Acumatica uses OData to share generic inquiries, a term for customizable data inquiries in Acumatica, to programs like MS Excel and Power BI. This format allows for sharing data only and not for making any changes to the data in Acumatica. The next integration option is the SOAP screen based API. This option uses SOAP standard to import, export data, and to perform actions in Acumatica. The screen based API uses a sequence of objects and commands in the same sequence that an end user could perform those actions from the UI. WSDL is the web service standard used in a Visual Studios project to employ this API. Caution. Applications using this API may need to be updated when upgrading Acumatica. Options 3 and or 4 is the contract-based API. These options use either SOAP or REST standards to work with entities, fields, and actions in Acumatica via endpoints. Endpoints are defined by the WCF service and tend to be more stable as they utilize versions to track the changes to the API. Endpoints also offer the ability to be customized in order to add additional fields from an upgrade or from a customization made to the native code via the customization suite of tools. We will talk further about design types and explore the pros and cons of each. We will demonstrate how to apply the WCF and WSDL services to a project to get you started. And then we will analyze a simple integration that uses MCV design pattern and talk about how code libraries can be used to break your AP application into smaller components which foster reusable code. Was this video helpful? Click subscribe to see more videos like this one. Thank you.